There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with a very exciting video, exciting for me at least, which is I'm going to tell you about all the books that I have pre-ordered that will be coming out in 2021. There might be a couple at the end that I am planning to pre-order. I have a little bit of Christmas money left to spend, but the first 19 are books where I have put my money where my mouth is and wanted to support these authors, especially the ones that are alive, by pre-ordering the books. So they will be coming to me in the mail and I have already paid for them. That's how pre-orders work, Sean, you silly book maniac. Um, so I got a, quite a few books to tell you about, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each book, but I am just excited. I am not going to make any fuss about publication dates because the publication dates vary so widely depending on where you live that I'm just not even going to mention publication dates. There's often a six, eight, ten month gap between when something is published in Canada compared to when it's available in Japan. In fact, some of the books I'm going to tell you about that aren't available to me in Japan until sometime in 2021, you may already have available where you live. So I'm just not going to make a fuss about the publication dates. You can do your own local research. The first one is The Swiss Summer by Stella Gibbons. And it is a Dean Street Press furled middlebrow book. She's the author of Cold Comfort Farm, a book that I've heard very mixed reviews of. Stella Gibbons died in 1989. She was 87. I think her debut was Cold Comfort Farm, 1932. This one, The Swiss Summer, was published in 1951. Don't know what it's about. Furled Middlebrow books are hit and miss for me, but when they're hits, they're big hits. Next, couldn't be more different, is a work of transgender-themed and presumably authored fiction. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. And in fact, it was supposed to be published January 12th. I'm filming this on January 3rd, but I got a note from the bookseller to say it was already in the mail to me a few days ago. And it is about three women, a mix of transgender women and cisgender women, and something to do with a unexpected pregnancy. Roxanne Gay gave it four stars, and I am looking forward to it. Good Behavior by Molly Keene. This is an NYRB book. I think a new 2021 title. NYRB Books brings books back into print. Uh, Molly Keene was an Irish novelist and playwright. Died in 1996. Aged 92 perhaps. Something like that. Her married name was Molly Keene. And she published books under MJ Farrell and Molly Keene. Good Behavior was published in 1981. And it's a biting dark satire of 20th century Irish society. Next is a new Barbara Pym biography, The Adventures of Miss Barbara Pym by Paula Byrne. I am so excited for this. It's the first new Pym biography in decades. And I have read, I think, almost all of the ones that have been published beforehand. And this I'm going to be buddy reading with Hannah of Hannah's Books. Another furled middle brow. This is The Foolish Gentlewoman by Marjorie Sharp. I have read one other novel by Marjorie Sharp. And this one is about a sentimental English widow. Marjorie Sharp died in 1991 and she was about, she was 86. I mean, these are my people. <laughs> All these women writers that lived most of the 20th century. I don't remember what the name of of the other Marjorie Sharp novel that I read was she's most famous for her series The Rescuers. I haven't read any of those. The Foolish Gentlewoman was published in 1948. By 2008 all of her adult themed books were out of print but thanks to Kindle 10 of the books became available. Well this uh, now thanks to Furl Middlebrow you can actually get paper copies. Alina Bronsky is a Russian-German writer, i.e. born in Russia, lives in Germany, has lived in Germany since she was 13, writes in German. And I read and loved her The Hottest Dishes of the Tartar Cuisine. And she has a new one coming out in English translation this year, My Grandmother's Braid, translated from the German by Tim Moore. 
Imagine that, an Alina Bromsky novel all about family dysfunction and human weakness. Count me in! Speaking of German language writers that I have loved in English translation, Robert Seetaler, the Austrian writer, has a new book coming out, The Field, translated from the German by Charlotte Collins. Seetaler is an Austrian writer who lives in Berlin. I think I used to always say he was a German writer, but that's a bit more precisely accurate. Oh, and my 2021 resolution was that I was going to read the synopsis of books before I bought them. I see this is about uh, the inhabitants of a small town speaking from beyond the grave. We'll see how it goes. I love Robert C. Toller. I've read two by him. Next is an Italian novel, If You Kept a Record of Sins, by Andrea Bajani, translated from the Italian by Elizabeth Harris, coming out from Archipelago Books this year focusing on a mother-son relationship. been hearing really good things from people on bookish Twitter that have read advanced copies. Cormorant Lake by Faith Marino. The opening premise is a woman steals her roommate's two underfed and neglected little girls from their beds and drives to her hometown. And the story goes from there. One reader described it as wonderfully dark and slippery. This one, I think, is already available in some parts of the world and is available to me as an ebook. but the cover's so pretty, I pre-ordered the hardback. Learning to Talk to Plants by Marta Orioles, who appears to be a Spanish writer, is that right? Oh, she's a Catalan writer. So, yeah, that part of Spain, Catalan writer. It's coming out from, or has been published, is going to be published, depending on where you live, by Pushkin Press... And translated from, I believe, Catalan has its own language, right? By Mara Faye Lethem. I will have to add that to the Goodreads entry because it's not there. The, The premise of this just hooks me. The woman's partner dies in a car accident, but no one knows how complicated her grief is. Just before he died, he told her that he was leaving her for another woman. And that's the premise of the novel. Okay, count me in. Another NYRB book coming out in 2021, Boston Adventure by Gene Stafford, an American author, and this is a novel of class struggle, privilege, and poverty, set in Boston, I think. Stafford died 1979, age 63. She is most famous for her short stories, and I don't know that I've ever read a Gene Stafford short story. Um, I just said... The title is Boston Adventure, and then said, I think it's set in Boston, so we'll just leave that in. This was her debut, published in 1944. And probably the one I'm most excited about, and I predicted this would be a five-star read in a Zoom chat I had with Heidi just an hour ago that you won't see for a few weeks, and that is a gay novel by a debut novelist, The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr., being published in early... 2021, and it is a love story between two enslaved young black men on a deep south plantation. So it's a historical novel, it's a gay novel, it's a debut, it's already gotten a full-length article in the New York Times, which I will link in the show notes. I can't wait to read this. Another gay black novel coming out this year that I have pre-ordered is from the UK, Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. And it is about two black, presumably gay artists, two gay black artists, uh, falling in and out of love, set in London. I believe it also is a debut. Another historical novel, A Net for Small Fishes by Lucy Jago. And this is set at the court of King James I. That's all I need to know. (laughs) Sounds fabulous. I don't know anything about the author. Apparently she writes historical fiction, and this one did capture my attention. The Irish writer and my friend, Ronan Hessian's second novel comes out this year. I already have a proof, just came in the mail the other day, that's got a lovely inscription from Ronan, but I pre-ordered the hardcover as well. Paninka. I actually have to ask him how it's pronounced. Paninka or Panenka? Let's see if I can get some help with that. Paninka. I think it's Paninka. I will ask Ronan later. 
I actually created the Goodreads entry for Paninka. Go me. It's about a 50-year-old man trying to rebuild an improvised family life. I can't... I'm not going to wait for my hardcover copy to come before I read the proof, but uh, that is a much-anticipated 2021 release. Ronan Hessian is the author of Leonard and Hungry Paul. I've also pre-ordered, and I think this book is available maybe in Canada already, but I had to pre-order it when it becomes available to me in Japan. I cannot pronounce and cannot find any help from any source that provides audio on how to pronounce this writer's middle name. So it's Leanne mm, Simpson, and the book is Nupi Ming, The Cure for White Ladies. If you can help me with that middle name, Beta Samosake, I mean, I start pronouncing it like it's a Japanese word, and I'm sure that's wrong. She is an indigenous uh, storyteller and writer who lives in Canada. This is described as a bold reimagining of the novel, a fierce reclamation of Anishinaabe aesthetics. And the protagonist is a gender non-binary character who lies frozen in the ice, remembering a long ago time of hopeless connection. I don't know what that means, hopeless connection, but anyway, I'm sure looking forward to it. Also, I have pre-ordered a book translated by Tina Cover, A Beast in Paradise by Cécile Coulon, translated from the French, and this book sounds fabulous. I'm not getting a lot from the synopsis on Goodreads, but the way Tina talked about it, it sounds like a Sean book. It's set on a farm, a French farm, I think. Can't wait. The Mission House by Karis Davis. Karis Davis is a Welsh writer, and this will be a buddy read with Doris of Aldi Books. Oh, this one's set in South India. So this looks like it has kind of a post-colonial tinge to it, and I'm really looking forward to buddy reading that with Doris. I realize that there's three more on top of the 19 that I pre-ordered, and they didn't go on the list, so I'm going to add them now. So I've actually bought and paid for, let me do the math, 22 books. So here are the other three. One is an Israeli novel, Aquarium, by Yara Shahori, translated from the Hebrew by Todd Hasek Lowy. And it is a story of two deaf sisters raised by deaf parents. They were raised in cult-like seclusion by deaf parents, and it's what happens to them after that isolation ends. Before I tell you about this Canadian book, let me just rant for a minute about why is Canada so embarrassingly behind, not with it, in terms of publishing like and promoting their own stuff. It is January 3rd, and I cannot find any article about what's forthcoming from Canadian literature. It's just, it's the only country that's so backwards. But I did, there was one on the Scotia Giller Prize list where there was some 2021 releases mentioned, but like, where is the CBC Books article? It's January 3rd, people. Get with the program. I'm so embarrassed by how provincial Canadian publishing is. You can't buy books published in Canada unless you're living in Canada. I've got to change that somehow. Anyway, I did find out about this one and have pre-ordered it. A Funny Kind of Paradise by Joe Owens. And this is about... A 70-year-old woman who has a stroke, which she's left voiceless, partially paralyzed, and her independence is gone, and it is told in her voice. That sounds like a Sean book, if ever there was one. The author, Joe Owens, lives in Victoria, B.C., and worked as a healthcare aide for decades. The last pre-order is another NYRB book. Motley Stones by Adelbert Stifter, translated from the German by Isabel Fargo Cole. This is an NYRB Classics original, so I think it's being published in English for the first time. I think that's what that means. I'd never heard of Adelbert Stifter, Britta, Mel, what can you tell me? He was called one of the very few great novelists in German literature. Kafka called him my fat brother. Thomas Mann called him one of the most peculiar, enigmatic, secretly audacious, and strangely gripping storytellers in world literature. And Motley Stones is a novella cycle. So I'm assuming this book is a bind-up of a series of novellas. If it's a cycle of novellas, I don't mind a bind-up maybe, but I'm not a big fan of bind-up. He was Austrian. He was uh, wrote in German, but he was an Austrian writer. He died in 1868 age 62. 
He was a 19th century Austrian writer. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to mention two more that I am definitely going to pre-order, but just haven't yet. Both of which I found out about about four or five hours ago. And no, I'm going to tell you about three. These three I will definitely pre-order. I have enough money that's going to be coming fairly soon. I got a birthday. There's going to be birthday money coming up. I'm going to order these three as well. One is an anthology of queer fiction. Queer, a collection of LGBTQ writing from ancient times to yesterday, edited by Frank Wynne. I'm always needing all the queer anthologies. And I was so excited when I found out on Twitter today that Sunjeev Sahota has a new novel coming out, China Room. That is going to be an insta-buy. I loved his second novel, The Year of the Runaways, with all my heart. This one is a multi-generational novel of love, oppression, trauma, and the pursuit of freedom. Fairly autobiographical, apparently. And the last one is by a gay Canadian writer who lives in Alberta, Glenn Huser, Burning the Night. And this is set in small town Alberta and Edmonton and has a gay character. And also it's focused on Canadian art. The only thing I've read by Glenn Huser was his YA book back before YA really existed. And I didn't read it when I was that young. I read it maybe in my 30s, 20s or 30s, Grace Lake. And it's the book that expressed gay shame so powerfully that I've never forgotten it. And I haven't read anything else by him. And this adult novel sounds fabulous. Do those sound like a lovely bunch of Sean books? Or do they sound like a lovely bunch of Sean books? Thanks for watching. Oh.